Did everyone have a fine Independence Day? Hope everybody's weekend has been going well for them. A while back I made a video about HARP and about how they had put out the press releases that HARP was going to shut down and the program had completed its mission and then they kind of added to it that uh, actually the operations of HARP was going to be transferred to a different entity so I speculated through their veiled comments that HARP wouldn't actually shut down, this another entity would take it over and keep it running, of which I suspect that I am totally correct now. And we all should have assumed the same thing. Such a project was so valuable to them that there would be no way in God's green earth that they would shut it down. And we're just looking at a photo here of the heart facility that I pulled from the internet. Uh, the, apparently, actually, all they did was close the public access to the website. Because that, when you punch it in, um, this is where it's going to take you now. And it's, it still traces the IP address to the same address you would have punched in to take you directly to the site. So there's your IP address. And it's got a locator. It still shows it located here. Fairbanks, supposedly, is where it's tracing it to, is what it says. So there are other things down here. Well, we'll look up this IP. And we get the same thing, you know, since it's already looked it up for us. Gives you the alaska.edu and your IP address. So, It would apparently seem to me that the server is still active, <clears throat> which is leading into my next idea of thought, is that the information is, is what they do. If you get too much of it, you catch on, you expose, you inform other people then the information is suppressed from you, your ability to monitor and view and uh, understand actually what they're doing by their own graphs and, and such, not on certain dates when events uh, on those days or shortly following those days occur. So apparently we've been blacked out from uh, seeing their graphs like we used to when they were using it, you could see spikes and everything like that on the, the uh, levels that it would show. And that is going to take me over here to Neymar. Now, you know that I always watch Neymar Station. You know, a lot of people, uh, it's just a, you know, a camera glare, such and such. It's not really a thing you know, when you'd see things. But what, what you've got here at Neymar, in case nobody knows, is it looks to me like more suppression of information because we're looking at the, the, the camera view that normally showed uh, a lot of stuff. <clears throat> you could see stars. You could see other weird objects that you wondered exactly what they were when they didn't fit into your cross-reference when you used Stellarium to try and understand what what are you looking at. Um, and then you could see how much different it looked from that point of the Earth when the sun would rise, when the moon would rise. You could see just how much bigger it looked how much, you know, how, how gigantic that light looked. So this is the uh, camera view 
now on this particular one. Now I'll, run it, I'll go ahead and play it and just let it run through on its, its own. And you can watch how crappy it is now. Uh, what they've done is they, it looks like they've changed the entire angle of where that camera is sitting from their facility. And you can see in the right lower corner, they've also put a superimposed uh, little square down there that supposedly highlights another view. So you can't see crap today. Uh, apparently, they must have a storm down there. And it must be quite hazy. Because when, the, uh, when you actually have some light, as you'll see here, you're all blurred out. <clears throat> but the camera angle, it looks as though, see there's a facility. It used to be it was more pointed that way. So you could see the sky and the rise of the sun and the, the moon coming up and all that stuff. But now, when, when you do have some light and you can see things, it looks like they've moved it over this way and that it's pointing more towards the, the side of this facility so that you're looking pretty well like that, more at this facility. So the horizon over here, where the we used to be able to see the sun like rising and then traveling across this way. Now it's, it's, it's like way over here, so you get barely a glimpse of anything, really. And then everything else uh, in, in the sky and stuff is hardly viewable at all. And I'll show you also what they've done. These other two cameras were, were uh, fairly useful before, but they apparently have been rendered useless now because I've been checking this for weeks and it's the same thing uh, you get absolutely nothing on this second one zero not a nil zilch you see it's running through all the frames right now and, he, and he, I can I can attest to even if this wasn't all blurred out because of a storm or something going on down there it would be nothing there. As you can see, you're not getting any type of anything from that camera. And then finally, you go to this one. And this is what you find on this one. Now, the second observatory camera uh, did have some you know, viewable frames on it. But from, from how they had changed that angle, too, it was pretty well worthless. This one here has just been blacked out for quite some time. So as you can see, what they've done... is they have taken you down, or us down, to one. In this location right here, it is the only one that has anything viewable. And you can see, well, you can't see it today because of all the haze blocking everything out. But whenever you, you do get some clarity where you'll be able to look at something, you will see that that angle has moved, and you will see that your view is limited now, much, much, much more limited than as before. So, it is my contention that access is being denied because there's things they don't want 
the general public nor the entire world to know about um, what they're looking at in their facilities because they're doing more than just atmospheric research and ice core samples. That's I got no actual physical proof of it other than my own intellect of um, speculation, so to say, might be the word. Because two and two adds up to four. And we've looked at different things before. We've read the research papers. We've heard Nick Begich comment about ARP and all the uses, we know that they have patented technologies on ARP. You don't take out patents and stuff unless you plan to use the product. And that's just the way it is. Now you have uh, this individual here is a pretty well straight shooter. Here's Corbin. And he's long for a while tried to tell people about the global warming lie. ARP is an atmospheric heater. And he's trying to get people to understand that the, that the Earth is not the Earth because of man activity is not heating up. That the documentation has been uh, falsified. And we haven't lived long enough to actually you know, be able to know what the temperature was a thousand years ago or two thousand or three thousand years ago. That's what science tries to prove through all their modeling. But then again, they're only models. So you can go through, he's on YouTube, there's his name, Pierce Corbin. You can go through and see how solar and lunar activity contributes greatly to climate within the earth. And they want to market to you that a majority of the change of the climate is due to man activities, you know, your carbon footprint. So what I can say is it's a big scam. It's more of a control system to force upon the people regulations and whatnot. That's going to end up making a lot of money. It's going to curtail, curtail your um, the way you live. It's going to be telling you how you can live. Your appliances are not green or your windows are not green enough. And this is Pierce's site here. Uh, he has a weather weather site, weather action. <clears throat> and you can you can subscribe to it if you want to. You don't have to. I'm just showing it to you. But he is a forecaster, and he is a, he's, he's opposed to the uh, ideas that. That man is causing climate change. Man has got a little footprint in the climate change, but in the in the whole thing, it's mainly solar and lunar. Um, I don't know how else to really explain it, other than that. Well, you're just going to have to do some understanding on your own. You can believe the lies of what your governments tell you, or lies to you on a regular basis, or you can understand the truth. But this is not shut down. It is still going. So you all have a good, uh, good Monday tomorrow. God bless all of you.